Hi everyone, welcome to Potluck Food Talks. Today we're going to talk about non psychedelic mushrooms. <laughs> well, mushrooms. I mean, um, well, what's there to say about these? Uh, yeah, the, uh, about these fungi. You know, um, I don't know, man. Mushrooms are crazy. No, like mushrooms. There's there's more to mushrooms than you than you think. No. Yeah, they're like they're actually not plants. They don't belong to the plant realm. They're like half plant help animal they're like their own thing yeah. they're, they're like a different thing a different kingdom and the living being taxonomy so to say yeah man mushrooms kind of creep me out you know it's kind of like when you look at like a forest ecosystem and you have these like networks of mushrooms that are like kilometers long and wide and they communicate from like one end to the other you know by like electrical signs you know it's like it's absolutely nuts you ever thought like this um planning of the the subway system in Tokyo that they used mushrooms to make it grow in the form of the city to design the the like the, like the routes of the subway there is there is like a video on that what <laughs> yeah and it's absolutely insane and you have to see that that's crazy yeah right now is uh people are going to collect mushrooms to the forest uh, we can also talk about that we almost died uh, trying to do that Shout out to our friend, Fernando Palacio, who, who tried to kill us uh, in a forest. I do think he tried to kill us uh, because it was like, that there was no way that that was a coincidence what happened, you know? <laughs> so uh, how was it? We, we went like early in the morning to Navarra, which is a place where you can uh, hunt this beautiful, super large, uh, most of them are seps, right? Yeah. What's the other name for seps? Juan y Porcini? What else? Uh, uh, Boletus. Yeah. Boletus Edulis. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. Well, these mushrooms are amazing. For me, these are kind of my favorite mushrooms. I mean, they're the, they're the king of mushrooms, right? Like, they're just the king. There's lots of nice mushrooms, but they're like the king of mushrooms. Yeah, I remember once we were camping in Poland with some friends. What we did was actually really stupid because it was a beautiful, like, magical forest. It was full of apples and and mushrooms in the middle of autumn. So we collected all, the, all these mushrooms without an idea of, of what it was, and we cooked them and we ate them, which was really dangerous. But I mean, these mushrooms were so big that they're almost like, like meat, you know, like, like you could fool someone and make them think it was a steak, uh, which I think is super interesting. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, I, I think mushroom is like the thing with that, that like closest gets to meat you know like also because it has this like huge amount of very weird umami it's not like umami like a, a tomato right it's this very deep but like very savory umami yeah i agree i i actually when i go to to the asian supermarket i usually get there's like a chinese brand of soy sauce that is a mushroom infused oh yeah it has like this layer of mushroom flavor into your soy sauce, which I think it's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Also like making pickling mushrooms, I think it's really interesting. Have you ever done that? Like bringing it to the sour side of flavors? Yeah, I think it's super delicious. Like pickled shiitake, you know, it's like super nice. I think you need a mushroom that's yeah. like a little bit meaty, like a little bit firm. Because people pickle, you know, they put pickle boletus, they pickle like chanterelles and stuff. And that I don't really like so much because I feel like it gets kind of like weird and slimy. But like with something really like meaty and firm, like a like a shiitake, I think it's super nice. And if we have to talk about memorable dishes, first thing that comes to my mind are the mushrooms of Gambara. Yeah, of course. Uh, I would have said the same. Uh, those mushrooms ha have become like a cold thing, you know? I, I see once in a while, like uh, some sous chef from Noma posting, oh, I'm making this mushroom Gambara style. And so basically it's a super simple dish. It's just sliced. Wild mushrooms, charcoal grilled, and then it has like a slow cook egg yolk in the middle. The, the egg yolk is whole, so you can break it, and that will be the sauce for the mushroom. And it just has salt, no pepper. So it's like a super three ingredient dish, and it's just amazing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think like those are, and it's like it's become like a um, international inspiration like you said you know like and i feel like since the basque country became like so much like so much more like of a trend like the food scene that i see this like combination mushroom egg yolk sauce all the time you know um in like loads of different restaurants i mean like even here in berlin there's like three different restaurants that have forest mushrooms with egg yolk sauce in like three different variations you know 
Um, what I also really like, like for example, here in, in uh, central, like to Northern Europe is the chanterelle season, you know, um, mm -hmm. and then like chanterelles in like a very light, creamy sauce, you know, uh, super nice, especially like, you know, in, in the Alps, you get it with like a dumpling, you know, usually made from like leftover bread. And then just like a creamy chanterelle sauce on top of that is just like a, a celebration of the product, you know. What about truffles? I, I would say truffles are the king of mushrooms. Like uh, Boletus is just a, a duke or some noble rank, but the the king of mushrooms has to be black truffle. I don't know because like because like because like truffle is like its own thing. I think like if I think of mushroom, you know, it's like because you wouldn't you wouldn't so a truffle and eat it like that unless you're like I don't know, you know. <laughs> Millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're Wolfgang Puck or whatever, you know. Do you know my, my my truffle stealing story? I don't know if I should tell this. If I should publish it, I probably already prescribed. You should definitely, yeah. <laughs> like over ten years ago, well, I was working in this restaurant. This restaurant was really shitty on me, like like everybody. And I remember we delivered like a special dinner for concierge of different hotels in Berlin. And the next day. The sous chef said, like, oh, man, here's the truffle. We didn't send the truffle last night. It was like a tennis ball-sized truffle. And it was like, I'm going to bring this home. So he packed the thing, and he had it ready to bring it home, and it suddenly, magically, disappeared. And I called Xander, actually the producer of the podcast, for the people who don't know Xander, and I told him, ask no question. Do you trust me? Yeah, yeah, what's going on? Do whatever I'm going to tell you. Go to the supermarket, buy the most expensive butter, the, the best risotto variety you'll find, <laughs> some chicken bones, and we made like a risotto, man. That was a <laughs> memorable truffle experience, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like truffles, truffle is this thing. I think it can be like super, super wonderful if it's like that right and if it's good truffle. Um, But uh, but yeah, it's sort of like, like I think like people are kind of used to like just like shitty truffle oil and they just like put like too much of like bad truffle oil on stuff and sell it and then put a little bit of truffle on top and it just ruins it, you know. But if you have real trouble, like my favorite truffle is like the whites, you know, the ones from Alba in Italy and stuff like that, you know, you can you get get them from other places also, but like the white Italian truffle is just so nice, you know. And uh, dude, there is like a truffle flavor combination that, that I've tried again and again. Uh, actually, I got this from Bernard Loiseau, you know, the famous French chef who, who shot himself. Yeah. He was like a real classic, especially in the 90s. And I had a cookbook from him. And I remember this combination of truffle potato and celery, which is super French. Yes. But you do like a, like a stupid cream, like a stupid cream soup, you know, not, not even with stuff, with water, those ingredients, not even with truffle oil. And it's already super delicious, yeah. man. super nice. And of course, if you add stock and good truffle, of course, it gets to a, a whole different level. But already the cheapest version of it is super nice, super good. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like I, I used to be really against truffle oil for some reason, you know, because I thought like, ah, you know, but like if you have nice truffle oil, like one that's not like chemically enhanced, you know, with like artificial truffle flavors, you know, and it's like super, super strong. It's like very nice, even for like things that don't have truffle in it, you know, for like, I like, you know, for example, if I make like a mushroom risotto, not a truffle risotto, just a mushroom risotto. And I yeah. just to enhance the, the mushroom flavor a little bit, I add like one or two drops of truffle oil. And it, yeah, exactly. it doesn't taste like truffle. It just enhances the mushroom flavor. Yeah. Exactly, because at the end of the day, truffle is just like a super strong mushroom flavor. That's what it is, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, some some interesting tricks about truffles. If you ever have like, like you ever buy like a hundred real truffle and you have it at home and you don't know what to do with it, you can uh, leave it on rice so the rice will get infused with the uh, truffle flavor. It's something really amazing because uh, there is only whatever in a Tupperware jar. You open it, and the whole room will smell like. Then I compare the smell to cooking gas. You know the gas that comes out of the kitchen. Hey. People say, "Ah, oh, there, there is a." Gas run out. What's going on? And then what somebody opened the truffle Tupperware and oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. it. Really? And, and that wasn't got it. Yeah, I mean, that's a good trick because, like, you want to, like, one thing with truffles, uh, if you ever have spare truffles at home, like Eric said, you know, you want to keep them dry. So that's why it's like a thing you keep them in rice so that they don't mold, so that they keep longer, but also it flavors the rice. It's a super nice trick. Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, I read this and, and Obuchong's book. I, I've never done it actually, but he also recommends uh, 
putting it uh, between eggs, and the eggs will absorb the truffle flavor inside the shell. No, I don't. Things. I don't believe that. No way. That yeah, sounds. It's all Sean. Man. That's a uh, yeah. He uh, said it. Well, well, he's not with us anymore, is he? You know what? Well, Who would you think to say that? <laughs> um, one of my absolute favorite like ways, like one of the few things that I would also make at home. Like if I ever have truffle, if it's like a nice thing, of course, like, you know, like fresh, like tagliarini or something like that, just with like butter and truffle is amazing. But like one of my favorite things is like, you know, when you have like a fruit bread, like a fruit loaf, like a bread with yeah. like dried fruits in it, prunes, apricots, maybe some pistachios and stuff, like a toast, you know, and then you, you cut a piece of that, you toast it really nicely, butter it, and then you put some like quince, quince jelly on it. And like a soft cheese, you know, like a like a like a brie kind of style cheese. Yeah, I'm following. You warm that up a little bit, you know, and then you put white truffle on top. Oh my God, this is that's like wow, like for me the that, ultimate like truffle experience, you know. It's now I have to try that. I was completely lost. I was following, but I, I was like, where are you going with yeah. this? Because it's about like mushrooms. You know, uh, no, have you ever tried hot cross buns in the UK? No. They're like a they're like a seasonal thing, and they they're like little buns that uh, they uh, with like icing. They put like a, a cross on it. It's like a like a holiday thing. Um, I think it's for Easter. Um, but anyway, the dough is like made with yeast and butter, kind of like a brioche, but also with like orange zest and dried fruits and raisins and stuff like that. Like something like that with you know jam, cheese, and truffle. That's like oh to die for. Yeah, that's quite a well, another classic dish, I would say, actually, you introduced me to this one, and I, I've integrated it into my pincho tours in San Sebastian, and every time I finish the tour, I ask which was the favorite pincho, and a lot of people agree on that, which is uh, tamboril's mushroom. Oh, yeah. Which is a ridiculously simple dish. It's just mushrooms cooked in white, white, garlic, and parsley, just super well done. But the, the nice thing they do is that they pre-soak the bread in the sauce. So the the bread comes completely wet, uh, like a like a wet punch, and you have no option but to eat it with the with the sauce, or completely soaked in the sauce. And for me, that's one of the best parts. I actually had a a, a guest once who was uh, intolerant to to the texture of mushrooms. So he had a problem with that, but not with mushroom per se. So he he just had the bread, and it was really amazing. Actually, he said it was his favorite pincho. Only the soft bread of that bit. Hey, honestly, that's such an amazing dish. I had completely forget forgotten about that because, like, the first time I had it, I was amazed because for me it was so counterintuitive. Like, because it's it's uh, champignons, you know, it's like but yeah. and they're just like poached yeah. in this like they're just cooked in this broth. They're not fried. They're not seared. They're just like poached in this broth. And for me, like when I think of that, it's kind of like with mushrooms. You don't really want to wash them too long. You don't want to do this. You don't want to do that. Yeah. Sounds like a bad idea, exactly. Yeah, and then yeah. they poach it and just put it on a skewer and like you eat it and it's like, oh my God, this is so delicious, you know? That's like, yeah. that's really the like, that that's really amazing cooking, you know, if you can do something like that. Yeah, and I think uh, that that's one thing that they have at that place at Tambo because also the hake we had uh, is just hake like in a in an egg wash, you know, throw to a fryer and that's it. That's so and it's good. amazing. Yeah. yeah. I was also, when I had the Hague the first time, I was also really amazed. And I was like, because I, I just ordered it and I was like, Hague fritters. And then it just comes and it's just deep fried Hague. And I was kind of like, ah, oh, like we were already at the end of our meal. And I was like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have ordered this. Like I'm already quite full. And then you eat it and you're like, oh my God, it's like perfectly made. You know, fish is perfectly cooked, perfectly seasoned. And I was like, wow, this is yeah, so man. good. Well, go, going back also to mushrooms, like a big topic that is emerging is microproteins. Um, well, in general, mushrooms are taking over in many aspects because they're used to generate energy. They're, they're starting to be used uh, to make packaging. Uh, if you put in the same package as mushrooms, uh, if you put a kombucha there, like, like in the fungi realm, so to say, or that they're used to be making clothes, so, so it becomes like a really broad thing. I'll just explain. That thing that you find in your champignons in the fridge that looks like cotton, that's actually like the, the structure that generates mushroom. You said that in the forest, there are like this huge networks of mushrooms communicating with each other. That's their way of communicating this uh, cotton looking like thing. 
uh, the, it's called mycelium. That's actually the, 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 the DNA, the texture. I don't know how to describe it properly. And you can make sausages and all kinds of stuff. And the, the, this is still in a, I would say, in a very experimental phase because I've, I've tried microprotein. I think it still has a long way to go to become like a, a thing. But as I said, I've tried mushrooms also in the Amazonas. We found a mushroom that was well, was the biggest one I uh, found with my friend Ken. So it's like a, he was born in the Amazonas. So he, he's, he was in his environment. It's super interesting to walk with him in, in, in the rainforest because he just sees <laughs> everything, knows the path and everything. We found a, a mushroom big, like, uh, I want to know like, how to describe the size, uh, like a wheel, like a car wheel, that big. Okay, like a huge thing. It's insane. And that also had like, man, like lots of uh, meat texture. It really felt like you were eating meat. You could pull someone for sure. Yeah, that's so cool. I mean, like, uh, I'm sure you've seen uh, Jong Kwan on Chef's Table, the the Korean nun. No? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah the one that brings kimchi with her bare hands. That what? Kimchi use. Yeah. She, oh, yeah, yeah. she drinks the kimchi use with her hands. Yeah. And I mean, like there, she ta also talks about like this. She tells the story where her father comes to visit her in the monastery, and um, she makes him this dish uh, with mushrooms. You know, that's like super savory, super meaty, and how he then kind of like uh, is able to let go of his worries about his daughter and what she's doing. Yeah, I mean, like we're we're also serving a dish, and that uh, and it's super simple, but it's like really effective. You know, we take oyster mushrooms and we get these really big oyster mushrooms, and we like roast steam them, and then afterwards, when they're like a little bit cooked, so like oiled, salted, a little bit cooked, and then we brush them with brown butter, and then we grill them until they're super crispy and like golden brown on the outside, and then we serve that with an egg yolk sauce. You know egg yolk that's seasoned with like reduced whey and koji and so it's like super sweet like uh, salty savory acidic and those mushrooms like the combination of like the smoke the brown batter uh, butter like the butter fat and the like nuttiness and like the mushroom texture it really feels like you're eating meat you know it's uh and like loads of people say that it's sort of like hey it's it's crazy like especially vegetarians they're sort of like man i haven't eaten meat in like ages but this is like the closest thing absolutely yeah i completely agree and also uh working with with mushroom stocks and mu mushroom reductions and all these kind of things uh, you can bring it to, to real uh crazy direct yeah <laughs> that's it for this week's episode of potluck food talks if you like what we're doing Make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. You can also find us on Instagram and TikTok as Potluck Food Talks. The show airs every Monday.